Hello, Britta. Hello, Ra. I was wondering how you start with philosophical practice. Let's say that uh, somebody comes to you with some personal problem. Where do you start? What is the beginning? Oh, it's a very interesting uh, question because it is important how to um, handle with people, which you, this is a fact you cannot learn in the university with uh, philosophy studies. When somebody comes to me, um, first I have to, to show that uh, can we trust each other? Can we um, talk to each other? Because it's a very intimate uh, problem sometimes. So when they first come inside, I have uh, tea or coffee or sometimes a little cake and we start with an original situation which is familiar to the person. We start with eating and drinking. So this is a point we can talk about the weather and how do you come here? Uh, do you find this way uh, very easily? Or, oh, I just heard in the radio, uh, the news. Uh, and so we start talking about a topic which is not the topic which uh, the client uh, takes with him, which he wants to discuss with me. This is the first uh, part to uh, come close to people. And then we can see what can we do. Because the other, the other point I have to find out is uh, what is the character of a person? What is the intellectual level? What is the language level? And this is for me just the um, same like a dog smells uh, what is going on. Yeah? It's just a situation where I can find uh, the points and I can catch. And then slowly we got familiar. Then we said, uh, okay, and uh, what can I do for you? Why did you come here? Why do you think you can help me? Do you want to tell me something of this? And then they slowly started, but they quickly forgot all the things they maybe had in mind. Maybe said, oh, I won't only talk about this or about that, because then they open the heart and everything is coming out completely. So I have a very big package uh, looking like a gorgeous knot. Yeah? And I have to see um, to the next, next part for me is, uh, no, the first part is to listen just listening. Sometimes I ask questions um, about understanding or I say, okay, if this is your problem, um, is there, are there other people involved? Do you know how they feel about this? Just to check up uh, what the whole, whole situation is. And uh, the second part will be to open the knot of this whole situation. Okay. So here you're more active in this second part. In the first one you're you're more listening and asking only clarification questions. Yes, okay. surely I do. But uh, the, the main uh, thing is that I'm not quiet. I interrupt uh, with this because otherwise the people think, oh, they can only uh, talk to wall. So you have to be uh, active, but uh, there's not no need to talk too much to them. So, so give me a, an example. Let's say that uh, here comes a man or a woman, uh, perhaps you can give an example from your experience. You talk to them for a while, a drink, you drink together, you get to know them a little bit and after maybe 10 minutes, 5 minutes, uh, whatever, uh, 15 minutes, something comes up and what happens now? Yeah, um, there's, um, I can directly start uh, with an example because um, there was one person, come, it was a wife, uh, a woman, he come, he, she came to me and she was so sad. She was crying. I, I gave her some, some, some paper for drying the tears and uh, then she started uh, talking. And I found out she is not existing. She doesn't have any idea about herself. She just exists um, as a mother as a wife, as housekeeping and everything. And, and she was an, he had an academic degree. She was doctor in a, in a natural science and she completely lost herself. This I could see, but what she 
told me is, oh, I'm very sad. I don't know. The children don't obey me. Uh, everybody's doing something wrong. So she, she told me a different story. And what I'm doing um, after collecting all the information, I um, start to open the knot. Uh, if you have a big rope and a big, big knot, you have to open the knot and you find out, well, it's not a big the big package, there is a rope, there is a rope, and there is a rope. And that what we do together in the next part. And, With, and how does it happen? Uh, I ask a question, do you think it is like this? And I said, after the, the first uh, yeah, the first crying situation stopped, I said, okay, may I summarize? Um, you don't have any, any, any kind of problems, and that is your problem. She looked at me and said, why? why you, do you think so? I said, yes, you have enough food, you have enough money, you have a family, everything's okay, but this is making you sad. She said, she stopped and uh, thought about this. said, yes, you're right. This is my problem, but I don't know what to do. So Can, can, can I interrupt for you? Yeah. Is it a common uh, stage in your in your experience that the issue is not very clear and you help the counselee uh, articulate the issue? Um, I don't want to uh, say it like this because the people have a very clear issue but it might turn out that it is a different issue what uh, at the end. So if they come here and say oh I'm, I'm completely uh, Un unhappy with the family situation, but it turned out that it was a different problem. I see. Okay, so in the example that you gave, you already saw at the beginning uh, one way to articulate the issue, that you don't have any problem and that is what makes you sad, that is a problem. What happens next? Yeah, she, she wondered and said, why, why do you think so? That other people maybe come and said, oh, we don't have any money. This is a problem of life, or they come, I cannot talk to my husband because he doesn't understand me. This is also not your problem. Every problem other people have, uh, you have everything. It is not your problem. So let us focus where is the problem. And so, uh, so I, tell me a little bit about you. And so I found out she was an academic and uh, she gave up everything for being housewife and mother. But the fact was that she so um, get into all these things that she lost herself. It, the whole problem turned out to be a problem of self-identity. What you need for uh, identity is a difference, but she doesn't have a difference because she saw herself as a wife of, mother of, not I'm here, this is my children. She lost completely herself in the meaning of an ontological way of to be and also to think about me and myself. And this was completely gone. It started um, that she had a trouble with her husband because she wanted to have an, a bank account and, uh, for herself. And the husband didn't understand the problem. He said, hey, why don't you use a credit card? There's enough money on the bank account. He did not understand why she wanted a bank account for herself. And uh, that was one of the points where I also had to talk to the husband because I explained to him it doesn't belong, uh, the whole problem is not with you, it's a problem of identity. He's also um, the philosophical thinking, so he could understand that the problem was a different problem. So he allowed, yeah? the, the struggle was gone on this fact. So, Britta, what happened after an hour at the end of a session or is your session more than an hour? Yes, I always uh, uh, want to have one topic complete. Mm -hmm. It means um, I do not stop uh, by looking at the watch. I said, okay, now the hour is uh, off and you have to go. Mm -hmm. So we have to come to a special point. Maybe to the point where the, the client can think it over at home or we said, okay, we can look at these different things for next time you make a decision. Uh, which topic we should, you want to look at closer. But uh, I seldom 
stop uh, after one hour. Mm -hmm. So it, so it can take, my, my hour sometimes takes uh, two, three hours. Okay. <laughs> if it so comes at, to at the end of the first session, in this case uh, that you are describing, what, what happened then? Oh, it's, uh, it was amazing. Uh, this always happens, but this special case was uh, uh, very special because she ran out of this uh, room singing and dancing, mm -hmm. uh, coming weeping and really uh, <laughs> down to the ground and coming up and said, hey, now I know what to do. It's, mm -hmm. Everything's great. All the problems are solved. Well, the problems have not been solved, only... Uh, her, her painful feeling um, opened into a new perspective. Okay. And that was, she knew what to do now next because we could find where the problem was. Okay, so would you say that you helped her to formulate the issue uh, more correctly? You zoomed in on the right, in the right way. Yeah, we, we found out uh, that it is a problem of identity and difference. And if the difference is gone, you can also not build an identity. And you, you need a difference uh, to have an identity. This is a philosophical uh, question which also leads very close to psychology, but not uh, like a common psychology is. With one cannot exist without the other. You cannot have a difference without identity and the other way around. And when she found out, a special woman found out that she has only a problem with self-identity. So she has to do things which... Um, Are unique, her, unique to her. Unique to her and not as a, a part of this uh, family, which was a good family, but she has to find a difference. Mm -hmm. And so she did it. She was painting and said, you, you cannot paint at home. You have to go a room outside and then this is yours. And everything is okay. And she did many, many things. And she also uh, found a job because she wanted to work anymore, uh, more because the children were grown up. So she had time and she had the space and the possibility to get back their identity. Mm -hmm. And after she found this topic and worked it out, because you can be creative if you know, oh, this is the only problem I have to solve. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a change change of thinking by understanding what the situation okay. is and what does it make painful. I understand. So by way of summarizing, would it be fair to say that very often at least, maybe always, in the first session after the warming up, the coming to know each other, you help the counselee understand the question more clearly and which ropes are which, right, to, to untangle the knot and to see what the deeper question is. Yes. Yes. As a, a, you you summarize it better I, as I can do, but it is a way like it. They see what is um, a, the different ropes, right. and they can uh, see if, if they want to come back to uh, have a discussion on a special rope, or right. they start uh, to be interested also in, in philosophical questions, because sometimes I use also things like this. For instance, if you speak about freedom, we cannot say there's a freedom in general. We have also to say, to add the question for whom mm -hmm. and concerning what. Mm -hmm. This is philosophical. Mm -hmm. And this question you have, uh, if you talk about good or bad or, or the behavior of the people, is always relevant for this. And so they start seeing the world in a different way, which is philosophical, but not being a philosophical in an academical sense. Right. It gave them the greater opportunity to take part uh, in, in their life. Right. Very interesting. Thank you very much. I thank you. <laughs>